as a symbolic reality, not as a personal reality. Father Sosa claimed that the devil exists, quote, as the personification of evil in different structures, but not in persons, because the devil is not a person. The devil is a way of acting evil. The devil is not a person like a human person. It is a way of evil to be present in human life, says Father Sosa. Citing a long history of church teaching on the nature of Satan, including several citations from Pope Francis, as well as previous popes, the exorcist organization said that Catholics are bound to believe that Satan is a real, a personal being, a fallen angel. The story is told that a stranger once stood before the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris, probably sometime before the fire, admiring its uplifting architecture and its beautiful statuary on the front of the facade of the church. A Parisian approached with this odd question to the visitor. Do you notice anything amusing up there? Amusing up there? Why no, answered the tourist. It is inspiring to look at. Well, look closely at those figures, directed the Parisian, pointing to a group that represented a soul being weighed in the scales of justice. Notice the angel standing on one side and Satan on the other. The Parisian continued, the devil gives the appearance of wanting fair play and honest justice doesn't he? Yes, admitted the traveler, but I don't see anything funny about that. Take a closer look, suggested the Parisian. Look under the scales. Sure enough, under the scale, on the side of Satan, there was a little demon pulling the scale down. That's how the devil works. If we decide to give up a certain vice or evil habit, or if we decide to follow Christ more closely, Satan seems to step aside and admit his defeat, but it's only a facade. In reality, Satan begins to work secretly from another angle. That is why it is so important for us to always stay on our guard, spiritually speaking. Temptations can come to us at any time, even right after a spiritual victory, so to speak, since the battle is always going on. As St. Peter puts it in his first New Testament letter, be sober and vigilant. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Ever since the fall of Adam and Eve, Satan had been the ruler of this world, St. John says in his Gospel. The law of sin, injustice, and selfishness had governed all human affairs, even though the presence and promise of God kept hope and love alive. But with the arrival of Jesus Christ, we are faced with someone who repeatedly outmatches Satan. He casts out demons effortlessly, repairs physical evil, leprosy, paralysis, even death, with a mere word or touch, and above all, he forgives sin, freeing souls from the most dire of Satan's entrapments. These deeds of Jesus Christ, performed in the open air for all to see, were so extraordinary that the leaders in Jerusalem sent some representatives to Jesus to investigate the stories they were hearing. And when they discovered the Lord's amazing works, they had to offer some kind of explanation. They could not, however, explain Jesus' special powers as coming from God, since that would require them to accept Jesus' teaching as well. 
But Jesus' teaching contradicted much of their own teaching, and so to accept it would be to relinquish their status and their influence. So they attributed his works to a pact he made with the devil, one of whose names was Beelzebub. Jesus calmly but clearly points out the absurdity of their claim. His consistent reversal of the devil's conquest shows that he is not only at odds with the ancient enemy, but also more powerful than the devil. That is why ultimately, we don't have to be afraid of the devil. With Christ on our side, the devil can't really harm us. But he still tries to. He tries to separate us from God and the protection of Jesus Christ so that he can lead us back into the slavery of his lies and deception, the slavery of sin. The devil is real, not just a symbol. The Eucharist is real, a real presence of Christ, not just a symbol. When Jesus came as the Messiah, he wasn't at all what people expected. And so the powers of evil arranged for him to be ridiculed, humiliated, spat upon, whipped, crowned with thorns, and hung on a cross. Jesus willingly accepted it, being faithful to his mission. He knew that in the end, Satan and all his demons would be crushed under the weight of his saving love. And the resurrection proved that he was right. And that is the pattern for our Christian living. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.